Welcome back to 5D Mystery School. Let's get into it. So I just want to start off by saying the latitude of the Great Pyramid, specifically the Pyramid of Khufu, is the speed of light. And on the electromagnetic spectrum, the human eye can only perceive visible light. And you can see visible light right here is about 10 to the 15th in frequency. And on wavelength, it's about 10 to the negative 4. So just to reiterate, if light is moving at a slow speed, that means it has a low frequency and the color that it's going to get off, give off is closer to red or orange. When it has, when the light is moving as a, at a faster rate, it has a higher frequency and the light you're going to see is going to be about purple or blue. Side note, why do you only see red moons? So then, if there is a wormhole at the center of our flat earth mental plane of existence, that means that its pull would have to be greater than the speed of light. Everything is connected, right? So if there are high dimensional beings using this, our center black hole as a quantum computer, that would mean that the processing power for that super AI quantum computer would be the speed of light. So for this holographic mental construct, that would mean the barrier frequency for you to escape this reality would be the speed of light. Brief side note, I would like to show you this photo of this Xbox and to have you know what it means. Brief breakdown, you have the X marks the spot. In the center of the X, you have the green emblem, a circle in the middle, a square on the outside, a square in the circle. Where does the Aurora Borealis come from? Let that marinate. Speaking of the Aurora Borealis and Xbox and quantum computers and black holes, you have the black sun, which is at the center of this black hole. And this emblem was the emblems that was made by those German boys who said they found a Shangri-La relating to this black sun. So the Aurora Borealis happens in the Arctic center. The Aurora Borealis, you're getting the rays from the black sun. Those rays also feed our sun and the moon. So if the moon is a super quantum AI computer, hypothetically, that would mean it runs off of AI. What would be the main power source? Okay, if black holes are used as quantum computers by higher dimensional beings, and the black sun sits at the center of our flat earth plane on the white hole side of the wormhole, that would mean that the Aurora Borealis comes from that center and since it's connected to the time tunnel that will mean there is a connection between the black sun feeding the moon and if the moon is AI that means it would give off its own electromagnetic field okay going back to hypothetically speaking if the moon was a quantum computer that can upload your consciousness and then have you reincarnate into this world that will means that it gives off its own electromagnetic field that affects humans now when it's a full moon, it would really have an effect on humans and a super moon, and this is when people would become lunatics. Also, the moon could potentially keep your frequency at a certain vibration so that you wouldn't pass the barrier. And this is reflected with the moon being red because low light vibrations equals a low frequency. And when it affects you, that would mean that your frequency would be low. And this is where the term lunatics comes from. This is why people lose their mind when it's a full moon. Is it raising your frequency or is it lowering your frequency? Now, in that same sense, stick with me here. Think about how it affects the menstruation cycle of women and why women link up with the moon. This could also mean that the moon has something to do with the astral realm, right? Because when you dream, you go to the astral realm. Side note, when people have comas and they have these entire lives they envision being made by their mental construct, are they in the same place that people go to when they're in the astral realm? And why does the appearance of the moon bring you into the astral realm with dreamy? And I know your pineal gland secretes melatonin when the sun leaves your area, but that in itself is a unique system. The sun leaves your area, melatonin comes in, the moon comes in, you enter the astral realm. And by it rotating every day, keeping your vibration at a certain frequency, 
You go into the astral realm every single night. So if you're 30, that means that you have spent about nine to 10 years, 10 years of your life in the astral realm. That means a huge chunk of your life is spent in this altered state of consciousness. That's what dreams are. Now, going back to this other video I made asking you if blood is sentient. Can blood create its own electricity, therefore responding to the effects of the moon? This is from a Russian science magazine. Energy from blood. How can we turn our veins into power plants? From February 21st, 2018. Russian scientists obtained an electric current of 15 to 40 microwatts from glucose in human blood, which is enough to support the modern pacemaker. So your blood by itself can defend off viruses and can create electricity like a battery. All right, pause to read this. Okay, so you can charge cell phones and batteries wirelessly, but pacemakers, they don't work the same way. Okay, pause to read this, but really read it though. One study found that people fell asleep later and slept less overall on the nights before the full moon. Other research suggests that the full moon may be associated with less deep sleep and increased rapid eye movement latency. The full moon, the moon has a full charge. So the electromagnetic current from the moon could possibly affect you, the water inside of you, disrupting your sleep cycles. Is there really a connection between your menstrual cycle and the moon? This is the important part I want to point out. A famous 1986 study claimed that there was in fact a link. After testing 826 women, the researchers found that 28.3% of women began their periods around the new moon. It's a new charge. The definition of a discharge as an intransitive verb to release electrical energy by a discharge. So if the blood can create its own electricity, follow me. Even more recently, a 2021 study suggests that human menstrual cycles may have once been synchronized with lunar cycle, but the artificial light and modern lifestyles may have disrupted that link. You can see a study was done here from women 19 to 32 years old, five women. Three of those women, the periods of synchronization occurred most frequently with the full or new moon. People get less deep sleep and increase REM latency with the full moon. Statistically speaking, assuming that periods start at random times, about one to two people will have their periods start three days from either the full or new moon. So if your blood can create electricity and is affected by the moon, are periods discharges, electrical discharges? And did they happen before the existence of the moon? I want you to read this. For Earth-based astrophysical observations, atmospheric water vapor creates distortions. The atmospheric water vapor is the water that surrounds you at all times. I want you to look at this electromagnetic spectrum. At the very top, you see it has a static field. That means that there's static electricity around you at all times. Now, if there's water around you at all times, and when you turn on a radio station, you hear that, that staticky sound. When you turn your television, you get the staticky channel. That sound in that channel, they're picking up from the static field that's all around you. Water is all around you. You know when you rub a balloon on your head, you get the static electricity, right? You know when you get ringing in your ears, that static electricity is being activated. When there's a full moon or super moon, there are more tidal waves. The moon controls the waves and creates more of them. Your body is made of 70% of water. The moon affects the water in your body. And if there's water around you at all time, the moon activates that water that is essentially static electricity. And water is a great conductor.